When you find a game series you really like, you latch onto it like a goddamn parasite. This is me, and that's the Persona series. Last year, I bought the newest game on a whim and wound up playing it for over 180 hours. But it wasn't the first Persona game I bought impulsively. In reality, I've actually owned Persona 4 Arena Ultimax for a while. I tried it out for a little while, but once I kind of started the story mode, I realized that it was a continuation of something I hadn't seen before, the story of Persona 4. So I decided to get a copy of Persona 4. Then I found out that there's a definitive golden edition of the game with more content, trophies, etc. on the PlayStation Vita. After many, many months of hunting down a memory card and a PlayStation TV to record footage, I can finally play Persona 4 Golden. There might not even be a better time to talk about Persona 4 since it's the game's 10th anniversary. So let's get started. Persona 4 is a special game. It's a statement I can make easily without even booting up the game. There's a reason that in its 10 years of playability, Persona 4 has received a dancing spin-off game, two fighting games, two different anime seasons, a crossover title, an enhanced Vita version, and undying fan support. Think about it like this. You could occupy your entire day with Persona 4 content. Wake up and watch the anime, play the game at lunchtime, race all afternoon, then dance the night away. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think the go-kart game is official. With all that support from fans and Atlas alike, I had to check out Persona 4 for myself. Now I'm going into Persona 4 after having played 5, which is considered a JRPG masterpiece by some, and by some, I mean me. My perspective is going to compare a lot of the changes between the two games. If you're like me and you started out with Persona 5, Persona 4 Golden is not going to be that hard to jump into. The gameplay is still turn-based, and it still focuses on elemental weaknesses. The social interactions are still awesome to experience, and there's lots of funny cutscenes with the main cast. Obviously, the story's gonna be a little bit different. You play as you, and that's why you, not why oh you. Yu Narukami, a city kid who lands in the small town of Inaba for the school year. Before he leaves, Yu has a vivid dream where he finds himself in a limo. Sitting across from him is a woman dressed in blue and a long-nosed man we might all recognize. It's our boy Igor and his new assistant Margaret. After doing a tarot card reading, the pair explain to Yu that he's about to embark on a great journey with an unfortunate mystery about to unfold. Yu is sent to stay with his uncle Ryotaro Dojima, a local detective, and his cousin Nanako, a young kid. You also meet this mysterious girl who will have some kind of importance on the story, you know, because she has a custom portrait and everything. As Yu arrives in town, everything seems normal, like a small town should be. On his first night in Inaba, Yu's not feeling too hot, so he goes to bed early. When he starts to dream, he finds himself in a foggy part of his consciousness. A voice tells him to follow, but Yu can't see anything but a silhouette. There's some weird dream battle sequence, and it ends with the voice promising Narukami that they'll meet again. The next day is Yu's first day at Yasogami High School, where he meets his new class and somehow makes new friends. It's pretty easy to tell who they are because they actually have cool hairstyles and clothing compared to everybody else. Yu's new friends include the aloof Yosuke Hanamura, the brash Chie Satonaka, and the reserved Yukiko Amagi. After Yu meets his new classmates, there's an announcement stating that all classes are cancelled due to to a police investigation. While walking home from school with Chie Nukiko, Yu sees a large group of people gathered around a crime scene. As it turns out, a body was discovered by a high school student. It winds up being a TV announcer named Mayumi Yamano who is in the middle of a scandal. This will be important in about a minute. As Yu begins to bond with his new friends, Chie tells him about a local urban legend known as the Midnight Channel. Basically, if you tune your TV to the right frequency at midnight on a foggy day, you can see a silhouette of a person. And they're your soulmate. Narukami tries it out and sees a female student on the Midnight Channel. He tries to touch the TV and discovers he can put his hand through it. Yu tries explaining what happened to his new friends, but they all dismiss it offhandedly. They do, however, confirm seeing the female silhouette on the Midnight Channel. After school, Yosuke, Chie, and Yu head to the local department store, Juness, to look at cool new TVs. Yu decides he wants to try to do this hand trick again, and does so, but then he gets stuck. So Yosuke and Chie turn around, freak out, and they try to pull him out of the TV. Yosuke trips on his own feet, and everyone falls into the TV. The friends find themselves in an unknown area filled with fog. 
so they decide to try to find a way out. As the three of them try to find a way out, they discover that inside the TV, there's a carbon copy of Mayumi Yamano's hotel room. Yu and his friends retrace their steps, and they find this weird bear-looking creature. The bear accuses the high schoolers of pushing people into the TV. They definitely didn't, but they'd like a way out. So the bear makes some TVs appear and sends them back to Inaba. It turns out that the student who found Mayumi's body was Saki Konishi, a friend of Yosuke's, and she's gone missing. The next day, the police find her body hanging from a power line. After discussing it with everyone, Yu realizes that the silhouette on the Midnight Channel was probably Saki. Wanting answers, Yosuke and Yu jump back into the TV world and meet up with the bear, now calling itself Teddy. The three of them stumble onto a recreation of the Konishi family store when they're suddenly attacked by monsters known as Shadows. Yu awakens to the power from his dream and defeats the Shadows, finally embracing his persona, Izanagi. As the trio explores the store, they find the shadow version of Yosuke. Shadow Yosuke begins to delve into every single one of Yosuke's insecurities, forcing Yosuke to face himself, or have Narukami fight his battles for him, and embrace his own persona. From what's been shown and discovered so far, it seems that when there's a foggy day, someone who's appeared on TV is in danger of being thrown into the TV world and dying from being attacked by shadows. The gang realizes that there's someone who's pushing people into the TV, and they know the dangers of the TV world. So it's up to our heroes to stop them. From a glance, Persona 4 is a pretty easy game to get into. It's a straightforward story, a combat system that's easy to understand and hard to master, and a simple anime visual style. Before we delve into all of that though, I figure we should talk a little bit about the differences between the original game and the golden version. Now obviously if you don't own a Vita or a PlayStation TV, Persona 4 is still a solid game, and there's a lot of people who've enjoyed that experience of Inaba. With that said, there's a few changes in Persona 4 Golden that expand Yu's adventures and make the small town investigation a little more fun. Some of the better changes include things like two new social links, so you have Marie for the Aeon Arcana, and you have Adachi for the Jester Arcana. If you max out both of these social links, you'll get new content in Persona 4 Golden. There's new difficulties, which range from very easy to very hard. If you want kind of that experience of the original Persona 4, maybe stick to hard or very hard. There's new anime cutscenes, which is always a major bonus. You can also skip cutscenes, which is amazing, especially if you're on a second playthrough. There's also trophies, since you're playing on the Vita, which is both a blessing and a curse. The game also has costumes, which you buy for your entire party, and you can customize and mix and match. There's new areas to explore in the TV and the real world. There's more music added to the soundtrack, and there's additional voice lines. You can choose what skills a persona will inherit from Fusion. This has already been done in 5, but for those of you who haven't played it, this is still a really good feature. Persona 4 Golden also features a lot of bonus content. In the TV listings menu, you can find concept art, exclusive promotional videos, a quiz show, and a whole lot more. But probably the biggest change of them all is that you can now explore Inaba at night, there's a lot more changes than that, but those are probably the biggest ones that you'll notice. But in the grand scheme of things, the core gameplay of Persona 4 doesn't change. There's still a bunch of ways to beat up your enemies and exploit their weaknesses. You can fuse and summon Personas, and there's all sorts of dungeons to fight through. As the game progresses, the killer begins to throw more people into the TV, which prompts you and his friends to jump in and save them with their newly awakened Persona. In the TV world, the true desires of the imprisoned are revealed, which somehow creates a physical maze sprinkled with treasure and shadows. Don't ask me, I didn't make this up. Once you reach the end of the dungeon, the victim will be fighting their inner self, which will then transform into a shadow you'll need to defeat. It's less about changing people's hearts and allowing a person to accept themselves. Unlike Persona 5, you can always go back to a dungeon to grind or fight a higher level boss for a new powerful weapon. Most of the game plays off this narrative with the new investigation team of high schoolers uncovering clues about the mysterious killer. Now, the outcome of battle will always depend on the power of your persona. As I said before, each character awakens to their unique persona through trial and tribulation. However, the main character's will is much stronger, which allows him to summon multiple personas and change them on the fly. Each persona has their own abilities and weaknesses, so you'll need to pick and choose who you want to use in battle. The role of Igor, Margaret, and eventually newcomer Marie is to help you harness the power and make it easier to create powerful personas. The system isn't much different from Persona 5. You can fuse a pair of Persona together, summon old Personas from a compendium for a fee, and give them skill cards you find in dungeons. 
However, it's also easier to search for new personas to create, and you can pick how many personas you want to fuse together. These features aren't locked behind social links in this game. Coming from Persona 5, it wasn't hard to get into the combat system of Persona 4 Golden. However, there's definitely some changes. One of the bigger ones is definitely the absence of guns in the game as secondary weapons. There's still some guns in the game, but now they're primary weapons and do regular physical damage. Also, Yu doesn't say the names of his personas when he summons them. Missed opportunity. Horus, Jack O' Lantern, Andres, Lilith. Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Persona! A big change I hadn't noticed since I started with Persona 5 is that Persona 4 makes it possible for you to control your entire party rather than just your main character. This wasn't the case in earlier titles. There's also a few combos with certain characters that are really fun to watch, so make sure to switch out party members to see them all. All out attacks have also changed. Once you land critical hits on all the enemies, rather than holding them up for money or power, the party just launches right into the all out attack, and if you manage to end the battle, you'll activate shuffle time. Shuffle Time lays out a set of cards from a tarot deck, and each card has its own ability, which ranges from HP or SP recovery, money and EXP increases or decreases, there's cards that shuffle the deck, and, of course, new personas. There's a card for each of the 21 arcanas in the game, as well as four suit cards. You start with one card that you can pick, but if you pick a card that shuffles a deck or decreases money and experience, you'll get more cards to pick from. If you get all the cards in a shuffle, you'll earn what's known as a sweet bonus, and the next battle you win, you'll automatically get shuffle time, but now you can pick three cards from the start, which makes it a lot easier to get free stuff from battle. The system is friggin' sweet. Honestly, I am I am protesting, I am boycotting Persona 5 Golden if it's not in the game. Cause like, this is, this is fun as hell. I love Shuffle Time, it's great. I love being able to pick and choose bonuses and even multiple Personas in one sweep, which makes it way more fun to grind through the dungeons because you'll never know what you're gonna get. In the original Persona 4, Shuffle Time only gave you Personas or would penalize you. And the cards were also face down rather than face up in Persona 4 Golden. It might make things a little bit easier, but the Golden system is way better. But aside from battle, the biggest gameplay mechanic is the social link system. Essentially, it's a way to make interacting with other characters benefit the player in battle. Each character's social link corresponds to one of the major arcana types from the tarot deck. Bonding with your best friends increases their social link, gives them new abilities in battle, and allows personas of the same arcana type to earn bonus experience when they are created. Once the bond is maxed out, your friend's persona will transform into a much more powerful form, and you'll receive a memento to make the rank easier to level up on the next playthrough. There's also the opportunity to romance the female characters once you get the ranks up, and you'll be able to see some uh, special cutscenes, and uh, I may have overused this. The social links with other characters only give the bonus experience for new personas and the memento at max rank, but the interactions are still fun to watch. Persona 4 also features reverse social links, which breaks your progress if you pick the wrong dialogue choice. Try and be careful. Depending on the social link, you might be required to increase your stats by going through different activities, but it's really nothing different from the other Persona games. You realize pretty quickly, and each activity will tell you kind of what stat will be increased. There's also a couple changes from other Persona games when it comes to the social links. Persona 4 Golden has the most possible social links of any modern Persona title, with a total of 24. Granted, some of them do increase as you play the story. There's also a couple of Arcanas that have two different storylines and characters, which basically incentivizes you to play through the game a second time. The best way to get through all the social links is to summon and equip Persona that correspond with the Arcana you're trying to rank up. Some characters also appear sporadically or on certain times and days. So try to prioritize these characters. If you can rank up many different arcanas, you'll soon have a lot of high level personas thanks to all that bonus experience. Aside from that, there's other minor activities to do like fishing and bug catching, reading, watching movies, and a whole lot more. They're basically there to help you increase your social stats, make some money, and make the social links a lot easier to level up. There's a lot of side quests in the game and some of them can be quite annoying, but I'll talk more about that later. Even though there's a lot of different gameplay systems, they all work in tandem to make playing through Persona 4 Golden a lot more fun. But a game is nothing without its story, characters, sounds, and visuals, so let's talk about the presentation of Persona 4. 
Visually, Persona 4 Golden isn't as striking as Persona 5, but it still nails that same anime style. That being said, it's definitely brighter and happier. Even though the main story is essentially a murder mystery investigation, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. The use of yellow as the game's main color reinforces that while there's a whole lot of craziness going on, the investigation team is still a pack of high school kids trying to figure their way through life. Now it could also be a distraction from what's about to happen because trust me, this game gets really dark and uh, it hits you like a goddamn brick. The setting of Inaba is definitely a bit of a culture shock, especially coming from a game centered around the hub of Tokyo in Persona 5. It's presented as a small town with virtually nothing to do aside from hanging out with friends and jumping into TVs. That's why when the murders happen, everyone's attention draws to the situation. In the 2008 interview with 1UP, game director Katsuhara Hashino straight up says, It's common for classic Japanese mystery novels to start with the discovery of a bizarre corpse in the countryside, and from there, a story that reflects Japanese mythology unfolds. Yeah, I don't think a description could have fit this game better. The small town setting also allowed for more interaction with the characters because it's not as busy as most of the other Persona games. You'll notice that there's a lot more special events written into the game, because the developers felt that having too much time on your hands could seem pedantic and boring, so they wrote in a slew of cutscenes to keep the action going. It does a good job of keeping your attention, and it does show how much the party really bonds throughout the story. It's definitely a good design choice, as you'll see the friends in Persona 4 have more chances to bond compared to the Phantom Thieves. Having these events also increased the need for animated cutscenes. Studio Habari and A1 Pictures work together to bring the cast of Persona 4 to life and the animations give some of the game's bigger moments that extra impact. Now coming from Persona 5, it really helped to ease the transition from fully animated life-size 3D models to the PlayStation 2 era look of the Persona 4 cast. Now don't get me wrong, I think it's funny to see the different emotions pop over a character's head while they flop around, but making sure the game has some more polished elements will help players who are new to the series really get into this great game. I'd say a big part of the immersion for me though was the sound design. I'm gonna be honest, I bought the soundtrack for Persona 5 because it was amazing and Persona 4 nails it too. Being that it's based in the mid 2000s, composer Shoji Maguro went for a J-Rock, J-Pop style soundtrack with a mixture of traditional Japanese instruments. The overall themes are usually pretty lighthearted. The sad songs can definitely pull out the heartstrings. The somber, more dark tracks really add that tension that the story needs, and that battle music is bumping. Oh my god. Ooh, there's one dungeon that turns the boss battle theme on its head. I won't give you the story spoilers, but it, honestly, it feels like I'm fighting in Dragon Quest, and it's, it's good. It's so good. Shihoko Harata does the majority of the vocal work and absolutely destroys it, especially on some of the new tracks for Persona 4 Golden. Now, if I had to pick a favorite track, uh, it's got to be a toss-up between the main battle theme from Golden, Time to Make History, or Deduction, the investigation theme. Man, those trumpets always get me. As for the other aspects of the sound design, I think the voice cast really did an excellent job, especially with the dubbing and translation. It's definitely a lot more refined than I was expecting, really doesn't give you that vibe that you get from some questionable translations of certain anime. When this bitch kicks, I'm moving to Vegas. <laughs> Now here's a really weird fun fact. In the Persona 4 visual data book, character designer Shiginori Sojima drew inspiration for Yu Narukami after the Blue Power Ranger. The reasoning being is that the Blue Ranger is usually pretty calm, reserved, and silent. That being said, his English voice actor, Johnny Young Bosch, actually was a Power Ranger. He started off as the second Black Ranger in the original Mighty Morphin series. If you like dubbed anime, you'll probably know a few more of these cast members. Aaron Fitzgerald's done voices in Pokemon Origins, Bleach, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and a whole bunch more. Amanda Winley's also had some notable roles, such as Rey from Neon Genesis Evangelion. And of course, Yuri Lowenthal's basically done everything under the sun, including Spider-Man. While the voice acting is stellar, it's kind of mixed in a weird way. Every time a voice line starts playing, the background music goes through what's known as audio ducking. Basically, it just lowers the music volume in real time. I'm gonna go warn Yukiko anyway. It's a way for the voice lines to really stand out, but because it's so sudden, it's really jarring, especially when Persona 5 mixes the audio pretty seamlessly. Shit, there's 
still no service. Ain't there any way to contact someone outside? The sound effects in the game are also pretty low quality, even still on the Vita version. I definitely sound like a bit of a snob, but I definitely understand that it was an easy way for the developers to keep the file size smaller so they could fit the entire thing on one PlayStation 2 disc. But you know what? Honestly, I kind of like them. It may have its screw ups, but when the sights and sounds of Persona 4 really immerse you in the atmosphere, it's almost perfect. This is going to be the most fun part of all. We're going to talk about trophies. Now, I understand that not everyone is going to be hunting for 100% completion in Persona 4 Golden, and I don't blame you. Some of these tasks are tedious, but I can help you get the most out of your playthrough so you can see as much content as you want and have less to do when it comes time for New Game Plus. Now, the big thing for Persona 4 Golden is social links, but not all are created equal. There's so many to do and so little time that unless you're really good, you probably won't max them all out. For time's sake, I'd suggest focusing on your main party, as well as Adachi, Marie, the Fox, and the Strength social link. Now the Fox link is important if you want to complete all the side quests, as it'll give you 10 quests to complete for 10 ranks. And a couple of them do count towards trophies. The Strength social link gives you one of the books you'll need in order to finish reading all the books in the game. So if you want to do that on your first playthrough, make sure to pick Daisuke instead of Ku. I'd also suggest maxing out your social qualities on this playthrough as you'll need high stats to unlock various things in the social links and even other social links. Now, knowledge usually goes up in class and by reading books. Courage goes up by doing dangerous or risky things like working at night in a hospital, going for a joyride, or eating rotten food. Understanding is increased by, well, being selfless and understanding. Helping others or volunteering to do things like folding origami cranes helps. Expression goes up sometimes in class, but the best thing to do is read books that focus on expression or go through the sun or tower social links. Diligence is the hardest one since there's less opportunities to get points for a social link aside from going to sports practice. The best way to increase everything together is to read or go to the Chinese diner Aya in the shopping district. You'll usually get some kind of stat boost and on the rainy days there's an eating challenge that gets you lots of points. Now I was going to talk a lot about the side quests but I cleared all 69 of them and found out that you don't actually get a trophy for clearing all 69 side quests. So I wasted a lot of time so I'm going to warn you do them if you want uh, secret weapons or if you want to get some of the trophies like the fishing ones because the rest of them are just tedious. You don't really need to do them. Aside from that, the other trophies are fairly simple and a good number of them come from playing the story. Make sure you're making lots of personas and fighting a lot, especially once you get a navigator character for those juicy navigation lines. Now, I know it definitely breaks up your gameplay, but make sure you take time to go to the TV listings menu and clear the Miracle King quiz. There's some weird small trophies too, like going to movies, buying from the capsule machine on a rainy day, fighting in a costume, drinking coffee at a cafe, you know, normal teenage stuff. But all you need to know is to focus on the easier trophies, social links, social qualities, and some of the side quests for your first adventure in Inaba. Persona 4 is just one of those games that has way more beneath the surface. It's a game that seeped in many different aspects of Japanese culture while still having the major elements of Persona play a key role. The highlight of the story is the interaction between Yu, Narukami, and his friends, who bond together to figure out the murders and the mystery of the TV world as the self-appointed investigation team. Through all the twists and turns, you can tell that by the end of the madness, they all truly care about each other. The wonderful storytelling is backed up by really fun gameplay, beautiful presentation, pretty funny cutscenes, and uh, a soundtrack that really brings it all together. While there's some aspects of the game I'm not a big fan of, there's no denying that Persona 4 and its golden remake were made to be masterpieces. I mean, seriously, this thing is like the golden goose who keeps on giving. I was gonna make like a joke that Narukami and his friends were gonna be DLC fighters in Smash Bros. Ultimate, but now that we got Joker, who's gonna be in Smash Bros. Ultimate, I'm just gonna say this. The reason why you're getting all this stuff from Persona 5 is because Persona 4 did so damn well. So just remember, when you're playing Joker in Smash Bros, just remember to thank Persona 4. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching this video on Persona 4 Golden. I've been wanting to talk about this game for a while. Perfect opportunity to do so. Big shout out to my boy Kyroid for making these visuals look so amazing. So good at this stuff. It's beautiful. Um, if you want to watch more RPG style videos, I will leave them linked. I'm going to get out of your hair. I'm going to get it out of your ears and your eyes. And uh, I'm just going to leave you with this. I'm False Proof. And I'll see you at some point. 
with most likely another Persona video. 